Welcome back to Bower Brothers. Today we actually are going to be doing something a little bit different. It's still wheels category, but yeah, just a little bit different. Stay tuned. Alrighty, as you all know, we like older wheels and the smaller sizes. And you know, most of the stuff we've been able to sort of sort out and um, do over the years. And like the biggest, the biggest hassle through all of the time uh, doing these, which is going on nine years now, has been centre caps. We uh, actually started doing first up this one here, which is uh, what we call it an XR4 cap but they use it for a few different things. These are available from the Barrel Brothers shop, www.barrel-bros.com, uh, not .au, just .com. That, that's an original, that's ours, so you know, they're very close. We don't do the aluminium discs, but we, we do a vinyl sticker instead, um, because the aluminium discs are really quite expensive. Um, and we also do this one. Now, some of you may or may not know that the rest of this place is a plastic injection moulding factory and we had this one made because we couldn't find good SSR mesh caps and they fit a few other things too. They go, they'll go in an RS8 also and all sorts of stuff but that's an original and that's ours and like about as close as you can get. Okay, all good. Hoshinos. Silhouette D01, one of the later ones with the, the cast in name, and the G5. So, caps for these have always been a bit of a drama, and there's a couple of reasons for that. These are the caps out of the, the D01 silhouette. They are aluminium, and pressed by the look of it, and they have a sticker on top. And they're always bent, and they're always crappy looking, and, and yeah. So, and then the alternative is, on the G5s, they did a snappy looking plastic one, which are almost impossible to find. And then there's a third problem is, fits really good. They're different bloody sizes too. So what we've decided to do is do a, uh, an Impul Hoshino cap. Now, because Contrary to popular belief, I'm not actually made of money. Are you listening, my children? And we are a plastic injection moulding factory. Uh, what we've done is we've come up with a hybrid of the two. So the differences are, that's aluminium, it's a bigger diameter. This has got the smaller diameter clips in and it has a disc here that's sort of imprinted. You can see it's, it's razor lower, whereas that's just a sticker. So I thought if we come up with something like one thing that will do both jobs, that'll be pretty good. At some expense, <laughs> um, we've, well, I'll show you what we've done. So, this is it. One very large, expensive chunk of metal. So this, is a, an injection molding tool um, that's in the back of the van at the moment. We'll, we're, what we need to do now is we run some trials on here. But what we've done is we've done on the back of the cap, I should have actually brought one down so I could show you. Back of the cap, we've got those on a slide so we can um, run a hook in on them. And here's the thing, these ones here, they're replaceable so we can do two different sizes. In the future, if there is um, something else that we can use this for, uh, we will, you know, if, if it's around about that right, because it's sort of in between the other two, but with, we've got the possibility of going up or down with it. So um, the plan now is we've got, well, we've got to get out of the van, we've got to hook some water up to it, and a, uh, it runs a, a hot sprue in the top. Um, dry out a bit of uh, ABS uh, plastic because actually the originals are made out of ABS. ABS is uh, acrylonitrile butadiene, butadiene styrene, so one of the styrenics 
like um, ASA and well, styrene, polycarbonate, sort of all in that family. Um, and we're going to use one with a good uh, carbon black in it. Carbon black is a really good UV stabiliser. We like massive problems with UV here in Australia. Um, I mean, <laughs> companies bring their plastic parts to Australia, to uh, up near Townsville actually, um, to test for UV stability. Paints and plastics and all sorts of stuff. Um, they, they sit them out there in the weather and just see what happens. Probably something about, but like, you know, your typical sort of from, from uh, and UV's measured in killer Langley's. I have no idea what that means, I haven't looked it up. But, um, you know, Europe on average sort of gets, I don't know, 40 killer Langley's of UV light per year. Here in good old Australia, we sort of, down in Tasmania, we get about 80. And then as you ramp up, up sort of the north end up there, up near Townsville, they're getting like 120 killer Langley's of UV light. So yeah, it kind of kills plastics really quick. So what we do is we'll put a, we put a, um, a heavy carbon black uh, in the plastic itself and carbon because it's inert, what actually happens with the UV light is it gets into the plastic and unstitches the polymer bond. So, you know, you've seen that old that old plastic stuff that's been sitting out in the sun, it's all cracked and that's what's happened. The, the bonds in the polymers actually have been unstitched by the UV light. Well, what carbon black does is it's inert and it's basically just plastic sunscreen. So, yeah, black black's the best carbon. You know, there, there are UV stabilizers and all that sort of stuff too, but yeah, nothing beats the old carbon. So we get a, 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 an ABS with a really good amount of uh, carbon in it and these things should last for years and years and years. We're pretty good here in Australia about uh, getting UV stabilizers right, but yeah. Next, thing, next time you see this, we'll be shoving it into a machine and uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. Here we are down at the plastic injection molder. We've um, shot the die in and done all the opening and closing program so we've got all that sorted out she'll she'll close and open quite nicely we're just waiting for uh temperatures to come up at the moment pot screws up already okay so okay door closes just got on very low speeds at the moment because the die is actually not hardened die opens and ejector and the idea is they didn't fall off down to this little box down here and um, away we go. We've got to clean out all of the, well it had polypropylene in it beforehand so we've got to clean all of that out because polypropylene and, and ABS are like natural enemies, you know, eggs and bowling balls, they just hate each other. So they laminate the hell, they won't mix, they're really like oil and water, they won't mix. So um, we are getting all of that junk out. The problem being is they're both black, so it's a bit hard to tell when you've got there. I don't want to put uh, any polypropylene into the hot sprue. This runs a hot sprue system, which is what this controller here does. And if you look there, there's no sort of that little tiny hole in the middle. That's where all the material comes in from. Okay, so here's the blob I just took out. As you can see, it's still molten plastic. Why am I standing on it? Because it's hot. It's like stinking hot. Which is a good trick in um, winter. What you do is you get a blob out of the machine when you've just, cause you've got to put run a little bit through to get some fresh material through in the mornings and whatnot. Roll it up in a ball and it's great for keeping your hands warm because something about that size will stay hot for a couple of hours. Try, you need to wear some leather gloves or something or other cause it's, it's like it's 200 degrees or something or other. When it gets down a bit, you know, you, it'll stay hot for yonks. And you, yeah, really good for keeping your hands warm. And then you'd sort of roll it up when you need to use hands, just put it in your pocket and keep your other hands warm. See, I'm full of the good news. This is the, the good things to know. <laughs> Okie dokie, been beavering away here. We're slowly coming up to speed. Well, we started off with that. That's our first shot. <laughs> well, as you can see, we're slowly just coming up to what we need. Over here we have five shots that we're now going to leave overnight um, and check the sizes of in the morning. So we haven't got the right finish 
on the side yet. This has got to be a rough finish as per the originals. And we're a little bit stringy on the top there. That's more screw positioning and uh, temperature that we have to muck around with. But what I'm going to do now is um, swap over the slides and uh, make some G5 ones. <laughs> the G5 one's still warm, I can feel it. But um, size wise, this will tell us what we need to do. Ooh. Ooh. Perfect. Oh, look at that. Let's see if I can get rid of that knob. Okay. See, this one's a little bit different because it's got the gaps and because it's still warm, these will probably bend inwards um, and stay bent in because it hasn't gone off. So we might just put it in. Quick. Oh, they fit. Ow. <laughs> That's awesome. That, that fit is just perfect. All right, I'm, I'll pop them out, which might be a bit difficult because you saw how I put them in. I'm squishing my finger in the process. I think I've got a couple of stickers here that we did as a trial just to get a look for them, a look at them, and uh, I'm not sure if they're the right side, but I'll stick them on and see what the story is. What we need to do first here is get rid of that uh, little pip. Do that with our little cutters here. Now, question is, these are the stickers. As you can see, they've got a little bit of shininess to them. That's the whole idea. So it looks it, very similar to these. We just made those as a trial. I don't know if they're actually the right size. No, this is bigger. So yeah, that, that'll be the right size for that one. So it's too big for this guy here. Unfortunately, we can't put them on, but um, you, you'll get the idea. Do you do any smaller ones? They look all the same size to you. So these ones are actually good for the, for the, uh, for the metal caps they will fit on there, because I'm pretty sure that's, the, yeah. But they won't go on a new ones, because that's a smaller, that there is the same size as this one here. So. As I said, we're doing a hybrid between the two of them. So we've got that, and as you can see, we haven't got, don't look at that one, that's a bit crappy, but we haven't got the right finish on it yet. It was still uh, at a gloss finish, which it's not, the die's actually not finished, so, but. Uh, hmm, I'm pretty pleased with that, I have to say. I have to get on my sticker guy to get those going. I need to check these guys again, all the ones downstairs, again tomorrow morning. That's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> Alrighty, just to give you a bit of a look at what, uh, how this all actually works with the center uh, caps, we're here at the moment making our SSR mesh replacements. There they are there. Open, eject, inject material in here. That will recover back now. Build up the plastic back into the barrel. That's the plastic up in there in the hopper. Get the thing dried out. Goes down through there. And away we go down here. So there you go. And soon we'll be making the machine caps. There's another one. Yes, this is padding because we're still waiting for the uh, tool mags to come back with us to us for the uh, with the finished off tool. But I thought what I'd do is show you in the meantime. So there's there's our the original like cap for a DA one. So it's the metal one. So and we're going with the the plastic one, which we've done very similar, same sort of colours, that sort of deal for those. But um, we had this sticker done originally for for the um, for the slot here, it's slightly different size, it? but what we've done is we've replaced it with one that actually same colour as the um, as our new cap sticker, if you like. So we want to sort of match those. You can still get we still get the well, we still got the original ones. If you want a set of those, we've got those. We don't have a silver ones. It's the only ones we don't have. But yeah, I thought it would look nice if our sticker on the wheel matched the sticker on the cap. This will be the end of part one, but what I have decided to is because, you know, I don't have any nice wheels to put a cap in and really show them off with the stickers and everything, I've decided we're gonna build some. 
So we're going to do a set of 14 inch DO1s, this actual set actually, and over here we're going to do this set of G5s, which is just a really nice set. And well, the thing about those is they have a good set of original caps. Which kind of defeats the purpose of building a bit, you know, to put our new cap in. Maybe another set of G5s. Well, I've got a set of 15s over here. I could always chuck the, the old caps in those, or I could build those. That's one of our new caps with the new sticker on it in the G5 there. That looks good. As you can see there, see it's got a bit of texture. I'll get the reflection of it. See it's got a bit of texture on the side. That's basically all we need, and then we're ready to go. So we're going to build some 14s and some 14 inch Hoshinos. So this is the end of part one. Thank you very much for watching and um, I hope to see you back for part two and part three through 17 where we actually build a couple of sets of wheels. Thanks for watching. See you next time.